Okay. You should have it recording now. Okay. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm so delighted that you're here. Uh, my name is Leanne Reagan, and I am super delighted. This is a very special, well, they're all special. All the roundtables are special. But this one's particularly special, special because we have Dr. Rabina Malik with us, and she'll introduce herself in a couple of minutes. Um, so, uh, yeah, super, super warm welcome to her. She's amazing, and you're going to get all of the benefits of hanging out with her in a little bit. Uh, in the meantime, just let me know in the chat, can you hear me and see me okay? Can you hear me and see me okay? Just give me a thumbs up in the chat. Uh, as we continue, oh, I'm just watching for some thumbs up. Just can you hear me? It's great. Thank you. So again, my name is Leanne Reagan. I am the founder of the Learning and Development Roundtable, and we're about to celebrate, I think it's our 11th or I think it's 12th, 12th uh, anniversary. Uh, and I spend most of my time doing three things. So I help teams work better together. So communication, conflict resolution, change management, um, all of those kinds of things, team building. I also do a lot of work around tech tools for ease and efficiency. And I also do a lot of work with subject matter experts who are needing to learn how to design and deliver training. So that's a little bit about me. Um, I am just super happy that you're here. You made it. I know that you have a lot, a lot, a lot on your plate. And I know that English may or may not be your first language. So I'm just putting some information in the chat. If you want to, ch if you want to turn on the closed captions and you want to make those into a different language, you have, I think, 35 languages to choose from. So if that would help your brain a little bit absorb what we're going to be talking about, feel free to do that. Also, please... Give yourself the gift of presence today. You made the choice to come and join us, which we're very grateful for. So just take uh, a second to uh, imagine that you are breathing out in a very long exhale. You're breathing out all of those things that might be whirling around in your brain, the things that you need to do for the rest of the day or the evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, the report that you have to write, emails, whatever. Just imagine in a long exhale that you are getting rid of all of those things temporarily. Don't, don't panic. Don't let your body panic. You can come back to them. But just imagine that you're breathing out all of the you need to do. And then on your inhale, just breathe in attention, presence, focus, so when you exhale, you're getting rid of all of those things that are whirling around in your brain. And when you breathe in, you're breathing in attention and focus and presence. Uh, welcome to all those folks who are just joining us. We're just so delighted to have you. We're just talking about giving yourself presence. And it's my goal that at the end of our time together, you say to yourself, that was really, really, really worth my time. So a couple of things to think about, really participate. We know that our community has a lot of wisdom and a lot of experience. So please feel free, ask questions, share resources, share your comments. We'd love to see that uh, chat bar light up there. Also, we'd love to keep in touch with you uh, in the uh, between meetings. So in a moment here, uh, in the chat, I'll just put some information, uh, which is the link to, we have a Facebook group and we have a, uh, a LinkedIn group. And by the way, if future you is watching this, um, all of the resources will be in the workbook uh, and in the, um, in the audio recording and the video recording. So just check out the chat there. Uh, also, we love, I love, 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 love to grow our community. Anyone who's interested in learning is welcome to join these roundtables. So please share that uh, that link to join. Uh, membership is free. And you became a member, by the way, when you uh, RSVP'd today, if you weren't already. 
Also, I, at the end of today, I will ask for your precious, insightful, helpful feedback. And I always like to say thank you for people who take the time to give, uh, to give feedback. So please uh, know at the end of today, I will announce the winner. Uh, I always, those folks who uh, take the time to give feedback, uh, I um, uh uh, do a random drawing and the person uh, that I draw wins my band boring online meetings uh, online course so um, hey Vincent nice to see you uh, and also um, by the magic of the intertubes uh, the second our, our roundtable ends you'll get the powerpoint deck in your email so uh, it will arrive in your inbox. Uh, members were saying to me, Leanne, we love that we get the uh, the audio recording and the video recording, but we want to get things uh, sooner. You'll get those early next week. So because of your feedback, I started sending the deck right at the end of our time together. So you can watch for that. Okay, I'm just about ready to turn it over to the lovely uh, Rubina, but just a couple a uh, couple things before I do that. Uh, one is I know that you uh, likely have lots of ways to organize and curate your learning and remember what you're learning. And I really like to share a tool uh, each roundtable. So this week uh, or this month, rather, it's the uh, the to do to done uh, worksheet. So I'm just putting the link in the chat. It is editable once you download it. So if you want a sort of a playful way to help you remember what you're learning and apply what you're learning, that's super important. We love, love, love that you're here. And we want things to make a difference when you go back to work and back to your personal life. So if you wish, feel free to download that worksheet. Okay, it is your turn. Um, please let us know in the chat, where are you? Where does, where does this find you? So where are you in the world? And you could say, I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> um, or you can say the country. Um, I'm coming to you from Victoria, Canada. Um, hi, Swad. Swad's in Beirut. Oh, thinking about you. The conflict there. Where are other people in the world? Uh, the Philippines. Hi, Kathleen. Uh, Raymond. Uh, Raymond's in. Hi, Raymond. Uh, in Nairobi. Nicole's in Lisbon. Vincent. Kingston, Jamaica. Lovely. Okay, well, whatever time, oh, Miguel's in the Netherlands, lovely. Whatever time of day this is for you, wherever this finds you in the world, thank you for showing up um, around this really, really topic. And we'd love to, as a way kind of of kicking it off, I'd love to hear, feel free to fill in this sentence. So unconscious bias is like blank because blank. And you might be thinking like, Leanne, it's too early in the day or late in the day, or do you know the kind of day I've had to even think about this? But if you have some, some extra energy, um, feel free to put that in the chat. And my example for this is um, unconscious bias is like a rainbow because it reflects our society. It, it reflects our cultures. It's, it reflects our organizations and our businesses. So if you have some extra energy to think about that, um, feel free to put that, fill that in, in the chat. And while you're thinking about that, um, and welcome Yang from Myanmar. Lovely, lovely to have you here. Uh, this is our roadmap for today. And uh, right after this, I'll throw it over to Dr. Uh, Rubina. But today we're going to talk about what unconscious bias is and what it's not and how to recognize it. We're going to give you some good news and some bad news when it comes to unconscious bias. Um, th those three things Rubina will do. And then I'll take over after the break. Um, I'll talk about bias traps and how to avoid them and ways you can take action. And you'll also get, as I mentioned, you'll get all the resources from today, including a workbook. Uh, and you'll also get access to all 11 years of roundtables. And if you are a UN staff person, anybody is welcome, but if you are a UN staff person, you can count this towards your UN professional development. And I will give you the link at the end of today to sign um, so that that can get recorded for you. Okay, we've got a couple of um, examples. Hey, Ali from Somalia or in Somalia. I don't know if you're from, nice to see you here. 
Okay, Vincent's saying unconscious bias is like a millstone because it pulls us down or keeps us down. Oh, it's very poetic. Miguel is saying it's like a surprise because we don't know about it. Oh, so good. Um, Katarina is saying it's like air because it's always present and not visible. Oh, it's so clever. That's so clever. Um, Yambura is saying it's like breathing because we all do it. Yes, yes, we all have unconscious bias. Exactly. And Swat saying it's like a filter because it doesn't let us see things as they truly are. Oh, so clever. These are great. I love these. And Irene saying unconscious bias is like an iceberg. You only see above the water. Oh, that's so great. So great. Okay, we'll keep those coming if you feel so called. Um, and now I'm going to stop sharing my screen in just a second. And I'm going to turn it over to Dr. Rubina. Um, Oh, gosh, there's an, there's not an E on the end of her name. I apologize. I don't know why that's there. Uh, and uh, I just feel very, when I asked her uh, if she would accompany me on this, this, this round table, she said an enthusiastic yes. So you're really lucky um, in for some treat here. So I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Leanne. Don't y'all love Leanne? Isn't she amazing? Her voice just calms you. Her being just calms you. I mean, how can you say anything but yes, right? When she asks you to do something, <laughs> right? So, well, I am just so excited to be here today and to be with all of y'all. Um, <clears throat> and you may hear my accent. I'm actually from the U.S. Um, and I'm from the South. I'm from Georgia and proud, uh, a, a proud uh, Southern Belle and a Georgia Peach. And uh, so just to tell you a little bit about myself, I'm a, a global strategic advisor and thought leader. And um, one of the things that I love is like championing leadership development. And I work with organizations to create um, strategies to help engage, retain, and um, actually promote their diverse candidates. Um, I do that through uh, programs. I do stuff around global, uh, global leadership career sponsorship, mentoring. Um, so, you know, I, I do a wide range of ways to work with organizations for the, to help with their strategy, their people strategy. Um, I've been, I just retired. I know, I know. Um, I know you thought I was 25, but I'm actually 29 and a half. <clears throat> and I just retired as a professor and by tenure, not by age, just to be clear. Uh, as a business professor in the U.S., I taught at Morehouse College. Um, I've been a TEDx speaker. I'm on a lot of podcasts, speaking at conferences. So I get I get around, and I've been published in the Harvard Business Review. And I have a PhD in organizational development. And just so you were just so we're clear, my PhD stands for Professional Hellraising Diva. And I like to say that I live up to my name <laughs> around that. So I'll let you be the judge of that by the time we get done on that. Um, I do a lot of stuff around DE&I. Um, I'm certified in several personality assessments and I'm a global citizen. I spread myself around anywhere. You can see me in Dubai. You can see me in Atlanta, Georgia, if I'm not traveling in other places. So um, that's a little bit about me. So you'll have a context of you know who you're who's speaking to you, and um, I am going to do one thing. I'm going to plug in my my computer before my battery goes. There we go. Uh, before my battery goes. So that's a little bit about me. If you have any other questions about me, feel free to ask. Um, and then you know feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. It's my full name, Rabina. Malik, and I think there might be an F, my middle initial. Because can you believe somebody has the nerve to actually have my name and use my name? Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. All right. So today, let's hop into talking about bias. And I loved all the things that you all said in regards to what bias is. And every one of those things is what we're going to talk about today. All right. So... Um, let's start out with an exercise. I want to do an exercise and the exercise is what do you think when I say want to give it another shot? 
So either raise your, get, come off mute and say it out loud or put it in the chat. Oh, <laughs> I'm just trying to get where the chat is. Okay. What do you say when I say that? When I say, hey, want to give it another shot? What goes to your head? What goes through your mind? No one? A try? Okay, very good. Okay. Uncertain. Anybody else? Opportunity. Yes, very good. Maybe is there another perspective? Yeah, let's try again. Very good. Gunshot. Miguel, very good. Yes. Yeah, so how about... You know, somebody could be thinking, hey, I wanted to give it another shot by taking another picture, right? Somebody might be said, oh, yes, I only, a nurse could be like, yeah, I want to give it another shot. Let me give her another shot. Or I might need another shot. Um, one, a basketball player could be like, hey, yeah, I'm going to do another, I'm going to throw in another shot. So when we're, you know, when we're, when we're talking about bias, as you can tell, like we, we all come up with different things. We all have different perspectives. And that's what we're going to be talking about today is all of these different perspectives that we have. So when we're talking about, when we're talking about unconscious bias, so everyone has biases, unconscious bias that they're wired to think about. Okay. So when we think about Un unconscious bias and we actually think about re uh, research you know this goes back to Sigmund Freud days where he talked about that unconscious thoughts have the largest influence on our human behavior pretty strong statement isn't it and we're going to find out a little bit about what those are today all right so let me just ask you, like, anybody have any ahas from the quick exercise that we just did? Anybody, anything comes up, come up for you? I'm trying to get to the chat, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, anybody, did you have any aha moments from that quick exercise that we did? Don't worry, there's gonna be more exercises that we're gonna be doing here now. Not, not a bad thing to give it another shot. It's not, is it? <laughs> yeah, but, but it all depends on the perspective, right? Somebody might think it's a bad idea to give it another shot, right? Because they, they might have failed or something. So now let's, let's jump into, we've already talked about what we're gonna talk about today. But let's talk about what is um, and what is an unconscious bias. So when we think about un when we think about unconscious bias, what unconscious bias is an automatic judgment or an assumption, and we make this without realizing it. So it's not like we know. Oops, what? Uh, okay, yeah. So then that happened. Um, we make this judgment without realizing it. Okay, let me just give me. See, you guys are, you have an unconscious bias right there. Like, what did that just happen? What did she do? So, you know, we all have these unconscious biases. So unconscious biases are automatic judgments or assumptions that we make without even realizing it. And unconscious bias are, they're your thoughts or feelings that you are not aware of that influence your judgments, okay? So it, it's just a, in, a, in a split second, something comes through your mind, something ha like just the, what just happened, right? Like my, my, uh, my screen just went dead. Something just happened and you automatically, you know, might have made a, a, a quick assumption about it. So it really is that subtle automatic judgment that we all make. And that influences, that's influenced, believe it or not, by our past experiences. And a lot of it is influenced by our cultural norms, okay? So this is all based on research. So it's really important for us to understand that and there's difference between unconscious bias and explicit prejudice. So unconscious biases are not deliberate, but still the impact behavior 
but they're not, I mean, like they're not deliberate. So I just, you know, want to clarify that. Okay. So, um, and so it, sometimes it's not uncon, it's, it's not intentionally discriminating. So we're not intentionally going up to speak or say something to someone. I know personally from my own experience, being bicultural and speaking several languages that, um, and, be, and being in the US sometimes like something happens and I don't understand, or I might say something that I might think that's funny and it's not. I mean, I'm more Americanized now than when I was when I was younger. I went to the US when I was really a young, uh, a young girl. And um, so I remember as I, you know, when I was growing up, like some of the things that were said, or I would say that I didn't intentionally know. So they weren't necessarily by, I wasn't necessarily being, um, pointing out anything discriminative. And these biases really are rooted in our preference for or against something. So they're not necessarily um, something that we're conscious of, and some things we might be conscious of, and we that happens over time, that we might be aware. Like I'm aware of some of the things that I know that I like and I don't like, and I'm sure you know you you do as well. Now, let me ask you: Can you think of a recent situation where unconscious bias might have a play? Now that you know the definition, but might have played a role in a situation that you might have had to confront. Anybody? You can jump off mute as well if you don't want to type it in. Rubina, um, Vincent is saying recruitment. Oh, OK. Uh, is it in the chat? I'm not. Oh, yes, I see it now. Yeah. Vincent, recruitment. Yes, yes, very much so, Vincent. And can you can you give us a little bit more about that? Tell us more about it. Yeah, I think uh, we sometimes maybe when we're looking at um, a list of candidates, just from the names of the candidates, you yes. assume that this person probably doesn't speak good English, maybe or maybe has never lived in this part of the world, so may not have the kind of background that that we're looking for so even before you look at their personal history profile you already have this thing in your head nah they're yes. probably not gonna fit you know um without yes. and, and it may be that they are they may have grown up in jamaica because you know they're people of all ethnicities in jamaica right, right. <laughs> but i just assume right. from the name that no nah, they're probably from the middle east or they're probably from asia or they're probably from south africa or you know um right. yeah that that happens for sure Totally. That's so, that, and that is such a perfect example that you know that unconscious bias of ours automatically you know comes in. Oh, excuse me. Um, thank you for sharing. When we see participation locations on a chat at the beginning, or when we receive an email and make an assumption on the time. Yes. Oh my gosh, that's so powerful, Miguel. Too, especially that tone of a. I'm making an assumption. I'm laughing because I'm not saying I'm guilty about that. So especially if it's like personal, you're already arguing and you hear the tone and you're like, well, that's not what I, that's not what I meant. Um, a matter of fact, that happened to me recently. I, I sent a text, I, I sent a message to a friend. He turns around, and sends me a message. Needless to say, he's not a friend anymore. We're not talking. We just became friends, but you're so right. That unconscious bias of like just making an assumption is so, it can be very, um, it can be very dis detrimental. Um, yeah, very good, thank you. All right, let's talk about the good news about unconscious bias, okay? So there's also, I know you're like, what? How is there good news? There is good news about it, right? The yin and yay of, of anything. Um, yeah, so if we look at, the good news about unconscious bias, and you know, bias is actually part of a um, of a of a mechanism, okay, like a survival mechanism. So part of it is that it really does help us to make decisions in case of emergencies, right? So it's a natural way that when there's something complex happening in our environment, 
our mind is going, okay, I'm going to do this and not do this, or I'm going to protect myself or even my family or my people. And I'm going to, you know, make this decision and do that. So um, sometimes, you know, thinking quick through bias can actually be very supportive and supportive and very efficient. So, so like, for instance, like recognizing patterns in family problems helps leaders, you know, with um, when we're talking, like, I don't know if you've ever read thinking, um, thinking fast, thinking fast and slow, um, you know, Daniel in there talks about like how working with these uh, leaders, these uh, familiar problems and family problems that some people might have that they le these leaders understand how to shift swiftly go into these situations because of that experience that they've had and because of that unconscious bias that supports that to make that decision very quickly. Um, so although there is a lot of it is negative, there is that intuition processing something very quickly that the unconscious bias can actually help when we're making um, decisions. So, and Rabina, just to jump in, um, Katerina has said, agreeing with Miguel, the human condition is to judge. I think that's so, so well put. Yes. So we need to practice suspending judgment um, as we're walking through life. Yeah, so good. Thank you, Katerina. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, and thank you so much, Leanne, for uh, reading the chat for me, because I do have, because I can get distracted by the chat. So I just kind of closed it. Um, so I'd lo love to hear some examples where you knew that your bias really actually either helped you or hindered you to make some sound decisions in your life. Anybody like to share that? Or you've had that happen for you? Please feel free to put it in the chat or get you know unmute yourself. I I heard an example and I don't remember which uh, orchestra it was like a professional symphonic orchestra, and they weren't having mo most of the the performers were men, and so they started um, uh, they started having the the people uh, audition behind a curtain. And that helped a little bit, but not a huge amount. Then they had the performers take off their shoes um, as they as they entered the stage and and performed behind this curtain. Any any guesses why they why people had uh, why they asked them to take their shoes off? How would that help with bias? So you're performing; it's a big deal, symphonic orchestra. You're behind a curtain. You're doing your audition. You've been asked to take off your shoes. Yes, Raymond, the clicking of the heels. So they could mm -hmm. still tell. You know, women tend to wear many times. You know, different kinds mm -hmm. of shoes, and the clicking of the heels gave it away as women. And then, and then it it naturally the the number of women went went way up. Yeah. Um, Darren's saying it was so the judges didn't know it was a woman. Yes, Darren. Yes. Oh my gosh. I have never heard of that. That is amazing. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And you're, at, I mean, in like everything that's being said here, like even Katrina was saying that like, it is just natural human. We're just wired to, to judge. And again, sometimes that judgment is, you know, for good and bad. Um, you know, something else talking about the impact um, is that, you know, our mind is, our brain is nat naturally wired for bias, is that, you know, there's been research done at MIT as, as well as the University of Chicago that resumes with, you know, we, uh, uh, Victor Vincent was talking about this earlier, that resumes with like white sounding names actually received more callbacks than those with African-American sounding names. Um, you know, I was reading somewhere recently as well and if you really have a, a like a feminine name where people can't distinguish, which like that's not I don't I, I mean I, I feel like in the U.S. in like in France sometimes you can be a Leslie it could be male or female in the in the U.S. it's definitely always a, well no uh, that's not probably a good example because you can be a Leslie male and female I think it depends on how it's spelled but you know but still you you have the unconscious bias and this woman was saying, instead of putting your full name, just say like CJ Smith, instead of having your, you know, putting your name, your first name in that can tell you that you are a female. So um, of course, like this whole name thing has been going on for a long time. 
and especially in the U.S. And I remember there was a one time there was this trend about African American names and like you, you know the sometimes like you know, the students, like when I, I remember, they were like literally use their middle name or another name that they felt like was, was more neutral. Mm. So, and, 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 just, and just to, sorry. Sorry, Rubita, just to jump in, and Irene has said the singing competition called The Voice, um, the judges only turn their seats when they like the singers without knowing who it may be. Um, and Darren's talking about the Stanford prison experiment, 1971. Um, yeah, fantastic examples here. Vincent's mm -hmm. saying we sometimes tend to think that if you have a Southern accent, you may not be as, and then in air quotes, sophisticated. Yeah, let us well, know, Pat, like if your name, if you have a name that other people have made judgments about, like have they made assumptions based on your name, um, et cetera. Right. And Vincent, thank you for saying that. You can let me know by the end if you th if you felt like I was sophisticated or not. But you're absolutely right. And what's funny is I'm laughing as you say that because I actually speak. Um, uh, so my or my my ancestry origin is Pakistani, and so I actually speak Punjabi as well as um, I'm proficient in Urdu. And in Punjab, like so, Punjabi is also. I perceived as not sufficient, not sophisticated. So I must be in that whole not sophisticated perception of languages. I'm, I'm kind of laughing inside when, when when you said that, but that is so true, right? When you're um, in the uh, in the south, and here's the kicker to that, Vincent. So sometimes I know I'm probably even being more southern because I'm I'm comfortable with you. I'm comfortable with Leanne, but I'm thinking that in some times, like if I'm in a different situation, I might even as we call code switch my voice and maybe quote unquote make it more sophisticated but i love my southern accent yeah and katarina um, saying um just to jump in i purposely picked a unisex slash english name for my daughter who's mixed race to reduce some of the bias but every name carries different meaning for other people yeah so good katarina yeah as a parent i i can imagine that, that. yeah yeah and i really appreciate you being that conscious so yeah. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, Vincent saying I've surprised persons in Canada when they meet me in person due to my Irish name. I and I'm Afro Caribbean. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that is great. Uh, um, Miambro saying I chose to hire young interns who didn't necessarily fit uh, fit in brackets the profile of past interns. The tendency was to bring in mostly foreign university educated folks. I chose those from public universities and who lived outside the capital who were qualified and didn't necessarily twang their way through the interview. I love that. That's so well said. And Swad saying, sometimes my name is taken for a male while I'm a female. Yeah. Oh my God. And Swad, I have to admit, I thought it was, you were a male. <laughs> so I fell into that bias very quickly. And not only that, if I may, I'm going to open my camera and speak. So uh, not only that, because I come from the Middle East and sometimes when I'm in Europe or uh, or in the States, I'm just taken like a, as a Muslim and I'm not a Muslim. So sometimes we go out and, and colleagues, friends tell me, oh, do you drink? I said, yes, I drink. Uh, oh, do you eat pork? Yes, I eat pork. Um, do you see? So it's uh, those kinds of stereotypes. Like if you come from a certain region, you have this uh, maybe uh, religion or, or whatever or certain beliefs. So we are stereotyped. And that's the issue with the unconscious bias, I believe. Right. So there is a difference between st stereotyping and unconscious bias. Oh. Um, so there, there is a difference of like one is like how we perceive that perceive something, um, and then the other is it's from our own experiences. It's a ju it's just a natural reaction. But a stereotype can be tra is trained. Uh -huh. like, like we we it's, we've been trained to say okay, Middle Easterners are Muslims, and they're automatically this and that, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. so uh, that's a great, right. that's a great and what, what I have done for example for my emails I put next to my name between brackets miss Good. so people yeah. who want to address me maybe the first time they make the mistake but for on the ongoing times when we have to be in contact they know that I'm a female and not a male mm -hmm. very good and just, yeah, and just to ju just to jump in there um uh I just want to make sure we're, we're catching up with the chat um 
Uh, Olivia has said yes with my sur surname Braithwaite from the UK. Usually people think you're from the US. Uh, oh, uh, this is so great. There's so many good things coming in here. Uh, or a native English speaker. So when I say, oh, I'm from Panama, I I'm a Latin Caribbean woman and my English is not that good. Uh, I usually get, people are usually shocked. And then Vincent saying, yes, I would have assumed that you were of Barbados descent. And as he's saying, in Kenya, there may be bias based on names because surnames are tribal and mm. any tribal biases may be unconsciously affect job opportunities. Just to do a time check. So we've got about four oh. minutes or so before we'll do kind of a summary and we'll have a very quick break and then jump into um, some traps or uh, yeah, some traps and some actions you can take. Thank you for all Thank these comments. Awesome. Thank you so much for keeping me on track. I'm known for my, <laughs> my lack of time on this sometimes. Uh, Olivia, I have a really good friend named um, Brath, Brathwaite as well. So I probably would have thought the same. All right. Um, and I tell you what, I I freak people out because like, especially in Dubai, when they meet me and my, I speak, you see how I sound and you know, with English and then they look at my name, but like, you're not, I know you're not, yeah, I, I know you're not English, you, you know, so it's, it's, it's crazy how these biases really affect you. And then the biases go to the point of like, so you're, they assume you're automatically married, you have children and I'm none of that. So um, let's talk about the next four minutes. Let's talk about how do we unpack our unconscious bias? And I will, I'm going to, um, I'm going to actually just like, uh, just talk about quick exercise for you. And I'm going to invite you to um, do that exercise on yourself and do it on your own time and to really be able to distinguish your, um, you know, your, uh, your story, but just to kind of understand, you know, so we must learn that um, when we're talking about understand, when we're talking about unconscious bias, we must learn when the most likely it happens and it occurs. Right. So we have to understand that we have to know ourselves. We have to know ourselves well enough to understand that self-awareness we all know is the first step. So unconscious bias is just an automatic trigger, as we said earlier, quick judgments, opinions of people and or situations. And it's also based on preferences towards against or for something that impact our actions. So you might ask then, you know, um, how and where our background and our life experiences shape these preferences. OK, so some of these could be media exposure, our family, um, uh, school, friends, experiences, environment, our culture, our religion, all of that gives us certain preferences. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm a, I am Muslim on the other hand. So sometimes I do have judgments and I'll tell you my biggest judgment is like sometimes how women may not dress modestly and I have an unconscious bias about that, <laughs> admittedly. So I'm very clear about that. Or even unconscious bias towards, like if I do see a Muslim eating pork or drinking, making my judgment around that, okay? Um, but, but otherwise I'm a very nice person. All right, so now where do all of these come from? So we got the experiences, we've got our religion, we got all those cultures, but there's other deeper ways that we have to think about where these come from. One is affinity bias. OK, as a human being, theoretically, these are theories. OK, so this stuff is grounded in theory. We automatically prefer who are similar to to us. OK, so if I meet a brown person from Pakistan, there's an automatic bond. So that's one of the reasons, like, you know, if we think about corporate America, which, you know, I've done research on as an academic, you know, why is there so many white men at the top? Well, that's because a lot of times, you know, you're promoting someone, we promote somebody that looks like us. We hire someone that looks like us. So that's why there's not many women as well as, you know, um, people of color of, and leadership. So that's affinity bias. The other where it comes from theory is the halo effect, where we allow one positive trait to shape our overall perception of about somebody or something. And then there's the confirmation bias. And this is where we're looking for bias that confirms your beliefs. Yeah, I knew it. I, I knew that, uh, you know, she was Pakistani. Well, how did you know she was Pakistani? Because she said she did X, Y, and Z. So I knew it. That that's You have a belief, you know that's going to happen. 
and you can confirm it. Or if I said I'm Muslim, you automatically be like, well, yeah, if she's Muslim, she's, she automatically has to, you know, be this, this, or this, whatever your Islamophobia, religious phobia that you have. So those are confirmation bias. We're looking for something. If I say or do anything, you're going to be like, yes, I knew it. I knew that's, that's, that's her or that's them. So be cautious of your, of your biases through some of these theories. I invite you to think about that. Where do you show affinity? And by the way, we hire people, Vincent was talking about hiring earlier. Sometimes we know we hire people that, um, that look like us as well. Um, the halo effect, confirmation bias, kind of keep those theories in the back of your mind. Now, we're not gonna have time to do this fully, but I'm going to give you an opportunity to understand this exercise and then you can do it for yourself and then understand your story. So, you know, we all have our backgrounds. We all have our stories that actually affect and create our biases, okay? And so our biases come from your background and your life experiences. Now, if you put your background plus your life, if you think about your background, your life experiences, that is a part of your story. That goes to back to part of your preferences where some of your judgments and some of your preferences come from. So what, what, why am I sharing this with you? Because I really invite you to do this exercise for yourself, your story, to be able to understand when you have a bias coming up. Um, understanding that my background, maybe my religion, some of the way that I was raised helps me to understand. So when, then when I'm about to make a judgment, you know, I understand what, you know, what that is. So I really invite you to work on that story and think about the significant event in your life that may have happened that might have, you know, shaped some of your story. Um, so think about this event, you know, how did this shape your values? How did it affect the way you perceive others? How did it affect the way you interact with others? So everybody has a story. You have a background, you have an experience, you took that and you made it into a story. And that story now runs you when it comes to your unconscious bias. I'm gonna invite you to answer these questions. Uh, you'll get these slides or feel free to take a picture of it, um, write out your story, allow it to inform your biases. Um, you know, it could be you had a bad experience you know, with someone from a certain religion or a certain region. And now that's a bias when you automatically hear someone's from that place or they're that religion. Um, so write your story. Like I said, again, think about, um, we're not gonna have time to do this, do this exercise, but um, I really invite you to, um, uh, I really invite you to write your story out. And I have some other stuff on the slides, which you'll get um, which Leanne is so organized. She's going to be sending all that stuff to you. So um, I'm going to stop. So any questions for me as I stop? Or I, I know we're going to have time later on. So um, thank I'm you, gonna... Rabina. Thank, thank you. you. Let's, let's all give her some love. I'm just going to bring up my slides. I'm just going to switch here. Um, but yeah, any any uh, comments, um, please feel free. She's taken her time to share all of her knowledge with us. So um, any comments or questions in the chat, just let us know. Uh, <clears throat> let's bring this up here. Um, also wanted to acknowledge, Olivia said that um, her great grandfather was from Barbados, but um, she's detached from that, those roots, which are so sad. Uh, and then we had an AI tool, which was interesting there. Uh, hiring people under pressure is an issue um, that Nyang has seen. Um, and Darren's saying, thank you. Okay. Okay, um, if everyone could, on the count of three, if you can just um, quickly unmute. So everyone unmute, unmute. And um, give a clap and a little shout out for for Ravina. Thank you, Ravina. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful.
Great. Okay. And she's going to stick around. So she's, she's not, mm -hmm. she's not going anywhere. Um, but again, um, you know, she uh, talked about what unconscious bias truly is, what it's not, how to recognize it, um, and the good news and the bad news. So we are going to take um, just a quick minute. I'll, I'll just share some announcements and then we'll take a quick break so you can take a stretch and then I'll come in with the traps and uh, action items. So um, please feel free uh, at the end of today. So just, again, a couple of announcements. I will leave a link for you to, uh, to share feedback with us. It's really important for us to know what we did well and how we can improve. And then I draw someone's name to win uh, uh, access to my ban boring online meetings. So how do you, how do you ban boring online meetings? Um, and there's the link for, for that course is there. Uh, if you want more information, by the way, Vincent's saying uh, Rubina is an excellent example of how we can be biased. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, also, uh, please. I I'm uh, not sure if I should take that as a compliment. <laughs> I yeah, it, it'd be interesting to hear a little bit more about that. I'm guessing I, that Vincent maybe that meant how we can, and she was very. Um, forthcoming in some of the ways that she shared her bias, which we all have bias. So I think that took some courage there. But yeah, Vincent, if you wanted to say anything more about that in the chat, feel free. Well, I can uh, just, I can say, sorry. Uh, all right, I'll okay. say it in the chat if you want. <laughs> no okay. problem. <laughs> okay, thank you. I know the chat, I mean, it's, you know, it, it takes some time to put all that stuff in the chat. So we, we appreciate that. Um, and please, uh, you automatically became a member when you RSVP'd. And if you're getting value from our time together, please share the link uh, with some friends and colleagues. I always love to, to grow this, this uh, our community. Um, also, I've shared my, uh, my calendar with you. If you are interested in other offerings, you can click on that link. And mark your calendars, November 21st, the last round table for 2024. I don't know, the time has somehow um, so it'll be the last round table for this year. It's going to be on tech tools. It'll be very fun. I promise. Um, very easy tools that can really change your life. Um, so check that out. Mark your calendars. You'll get all that information as a member. It'll come to you. And also, I love getting input from you. And I, you, this is the first time I've said this. Um, I'm going to be launching uh, in the new year, a global training of trainers academy. So a program to work with people who want to learn how to design and teach in really cool and engaging ways. So I would love to get your feedback. Um, there's a link there. It just takes a couple of minutes. Um, it'll be a membership program. So I'm looking for your feedback on membership programs. Uh, <clears throat> Um, Vincent saying, my initial impression um, for Rubina did not make me think of a person with a Southern accent from Georgia. I immediately was thinking South Asia with a completely different accent and even personality. Yeah, she's an unconscious bias in, uh, in action. Thank you, Vincent, for taking the time to put that there. So thank you. Thank okay. You. Let, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So let's just take a quick break. Um, just a couple of minutes, like just a like a three minute, you know, time to stretch, um, take a tea, uh, you know, hug your cat or whatever you are, you know, if you're at home or, or say hello to a colleague. And then uh, after you come back in three minutes, we'll talk about bias traps and how to avoid them and how to take action. So we'll see you in three minutes. I'll just pause the recording. Welcome back, welcome back. If future you is watching this video, all the links that I talk about will be down below. So check those out. Uh, we're on part two now of our roundtable on unconscious bias. Before the break, we talked about, um, Dr. Rabina Malik talked about what unconscious bias is, what it's not, how to recognize it, the good news and the bad news. And I'm gonna come in now with some bias traps and ways we can take action. So uh, let's get started. So I am going to ask you uh, who has been affected by unconscious bias. Now, if all of us have very different experiences in this, 
And some of the questions are that I'll ask you are sensitive topics. So if you don't want to, if you've been affected, but you don't want to indicate that, you do whatever keeps you com feeling comfortable uh, and safe. So what I'm going to ask you to do is uh, turn on your cameras if you're comfortable. So I'll, I'll explain the exercise here. So um, I'll ask you to turn on your cameras. And then if you have been affected by unconscious bias, when I, when I mention a particular thing, then you turn your camera off. Okay. So if you are comfortable, turn your cameras on. So feel free to turn them on. Um, Rabina, if you want to take part, you're welcome to do that. Turn your cameras on. Uh, hi, Vicky. Hi, Swad. Hey, Rabina. <clears throat> hi, Anne. Okay. Oh, and Darren's coming in. Hi, Darren. Raymond. Uh, Darren, thanks for being patient. I know you had some issues joining. Hi, Vincent. Okay. So here's a question. If you have been affected by unconscious bias when it comes to gender, turn your camera off for a second. So if you have been affected by unconscious bias as it relates to gender, turn your camera off. Hi, Nicole. Okay. And then turn, if you turned it off, turn it back on. Okay. If you've been affected by unconscious bias because of your race, because of your race, turn your camera off for a sec. If you've been affected by unconscious bias because of your race, turn your camera off. Okay. Uh, if you turned it off, turn it back on. If you've been affected by unconscious bias because of your physical ability, your physical ability, turn your camera off. <clears throat> okay, physical ability, and turn your camera on if you turned it off. Um, if you've been affected by unconscious bias because of neurodivergence, neurodivergence, turn your cameras off. And again, you may have been affected by it, but you may choose not to disclose by turning your camera off. So don't um, do whatever is comfortable for you. Okay, and we'll do one more. There's lots of these we could do more. So turn your camera on if you turned it off. Um, if you've been affected by unconscious bias because of your religion or your spiritual beliefs, because of your religion or your spiritual beliefs, turn your camera off. Okay. Okay, lovely. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. I'm going to back up the the deck and uh I'll just take a second here to bring it back in. okay <clears throat> okay thank you for sharing I know that can be a low risk exercise for some people and a high risk exercise for some what I notice is cameras going off and on constantly um, which tells me that we all have very different experiences when it comes to to this um, Anna's saying today, my appearance is off. Okay. Yeah, no worries. Oh, you're post-op. So, so grateful that you are on the other side of an operation and that you're here, that you showed up being post-op. Um, good for you, Anne. Okay. So let's dive into some traps. Um, the unconscious bias traps. So the thing about these, uh, the unconscious bias is that we can be blind to the obvious and we're also blind to our blindness, right? So we can be blind to the obvious and we are also blind to our blindness. Um, a lot of the research I did on this came from this book, so good. And it's listed there at the bottom. It's the lead, uh, unconscious bias. Um, oh, sorry, that's not right there. Um, uh, the Leader's Guide to Unconscious Bias by um, Pamela Fuller, Mark Murphy and Ann Chow, so good. Uh, so why is this even an issue? Why is unconscious bias even an issue? Um, our brains are supercomputers. Our brains are absolutely supercomputers. And we have a capacity problem. We have an absolute capacity problem in our brains. So we have a certain number of pieces of information that comes into our brain uh, every minute. 
uh, take a guess in the chat there. How many pieces of information do you think comes into our brains every minute? Take a guess. How many pieces of information comes into our brain every minute? What do you think? Uh, so Olivia's saying millions, um, 100,000, Katerina, 2 million, says Darren. These are great guesses. 2 million plus, says Darren. Yeah. Okay. It's 11 million. <laughs> 11 million pieces of information, roughly, are coming into our brains every minute. So how many of those things, of how many of those 11 million things can we pay attention to? What do you think? It's your guess. So 11 million are coming in every minute. How many can we pay attention to? Darren's saying seven to, uh, Katerina is saying one. Darren, seven to nine. These are good guesses. <clears throat> um, Darren, you have some folks agreeing with you. One to five, says Olivia. Two to three. Okay. Research tells us it's about 40, right? Or 0. 0.00000364, right? So that's a lot of stuff that's coming in that we can't take, uh, we just can't pay attention to right? Because we have this capacity issue. So what happens because of that is these unconscious bias traps. Uh, so we have, there's about 180, 180 types of bias. And uh, I'm going to divide them into three main categories. And Rabina mentioned some of these, which is really great. So the first one, the first type of bias, the first trap is information overload. So this is a, these traps are our mental shortcuts. So our brains are trying to protect us. They're trying to help us. Uh, and they take these shortcuts, which can then often be traps. So the first type of uh, unconscious bias trap is information overload. Information overload, an example of that trap is confir confirmation bias. And Rabina um, went over this. Um, brilliantly. So we look for proof that we're right, right? We, I, I, <laughs> I, you're, I once worked with a client, uh, the participants thought that old men who wore hats were really bad drivers. You're going to think I'm making that up, right? This is a perfect example of confirmation bias because they didn't notice, for example, the old men who weren't wearing hats, who were, who were bad drivers, or who weren't wearing hats that were good drivers, but somehow maybe they saw a gentleman who was older, who was wearing a hat, uh, who wasn't a good driver, and now suddenly all older men wearing hats were really bad drivers. And it feels really good. Our brains reward us for this. Our brains reward us for confirmation bias. It feels good to be right. We actually get a rush of dopamine it feels pleasurable in our brain when we find things that are supporting um, what we what we think, what we believe. Okay, so we've got information overload. Uh, an example of that is confirmation bias. The next one is anchoring bias. And anchoring bias is we rely more on the first piece of evidence. So the first thing that we see that um, helps us think that we're right, that we're correct, uh, uh, we pay more attention to that. And a, a big trap for that is first impressions. So if you meet someone and get a negative first impression, um, that can really stick, right? We pay more attention to that, those first pieces of information that come in. Okay, so unconscious, unconscious bias traps. The first category is information overload, including confirmation bias and anchoring bias. The next category is feelings over facts. So we believe <clears throat> that our beliefs are facts. We, we don't tend to question those. It's a real trap. Like I'm right, of course, that how, how I'm feeling is right. Um, and uh, for example, an, an example of this is how big is Africa? So how many people, like I, I'm in Canada right now, but I live in Nairobi in Kenya. Um, how many people uh, are in Africa right now in the chat? Um, and how many people have had 
people talk about Africa like it's a country or um, okay so Darren's in Africa okay so this tends to be a feeling over fact hey SE in Africa yeah it's a real so it's affected by we we how the general public around the world feels about Africa's prominence on the world stage okay how and of course this is not fact right these are feelings but this affects our beliefs so you may or may not be surprised uh to um this is Africa <laughs> this is how big um oh and Yang was in Liberia for two years Right. So this is how big the continent is, right? You can fit USA, China, India, um, you can fit France in there, etc. It is a big, big continent. But because there's a lot of stories around poverty, etc., that actually affects our beliefs. And we think that it's smaller than it is. Let me know, does that surprise anyone? Um, let me know how you feel about that. Okay. Um, Yambo is saying, I'm in the States at the moment. It drives me nuts when folks say they've been to Africa, like they've been to one country, <laughs> right? Right. And we saw this during COVID. Um, I noticed, right. People feeling fearful. Um, uh, uh, sorry, not COVID. Um, oh, I'm gapping on the name of the disease. Um, super, super, super contagious. Ebola. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Vincent. People feeling like you were at risk, say, if you were living in Kenya of Ebola, when in fact, they, I saw this really great thing on online that looked at the actual differences, because um, people thought that, you know, everyone in Africa was at risk of Ebola. Okay, so an example of feelings over fact, and again, this is a bias trap, is in-group bias. And we talked a little bit, someone talked about tribes in, in Kenya. We tend to favor people we like, or who are like us. We tend to favor people we like or who are like us. And in one study, um, let me know, what do you think? What percentage of leaders selected protégés, so you know people to follow in their footsteps, that were the same race and gender? So what percentage in this one particular study did leaders select people that were the same race and gender? We've got, um, oh, Miguel is saying, I still don't quite believe it. Yeah. Uh, so we've got 90, 70, 90. Okay, 71, 71% in this one particular uh, study, right? So we're losing with this feelings over fact, this in-group bias, we lose all of that beautiful diversity because we're missing all of those other perspectives. Okay, another one here is negativity bias. We are more affected by negative experiences than positive. And this is our brains trying to protect us, right? So if somebody gives you a compliment, it's more like Teflon, right? Those things tend to, to slide off, right? That slippery surface. Whereas someone gives you a negative piece of feedback, that's more like, like Teflon. It sticks in your brain. So we are more... Uh, we pay more attention to the negative things than the positive things. Uh, Catherine's saying, I'm a student in Kenya. I didn't understand why people refer to us as Africa in general until I tried to understand where they were coming from. Oh, that's so nice. So you, someone is showing you bias and you're trying to look at it from their perspective. That's very, um, that's very kind and clever. Okay, <clears throat> so we, uh, in terms of these traps, we've got the information overload, we've got the feelings over facts, and there's uh, two types of particular bias for each of these. I've got one more, um, the need for speed. <clears throat> Pardon me, someone, I think at the beginning talked about the pressure, they, I think they used the word pressure, the pressure to hire. We cut corners when we're under pressure. We, there's so much information coming at us. Our to-do lists tend to be so long. So we, uh, in the need to act quickly, we cut these corners and it's, it's born from a uh, survival, right? If we're, if we feel like we're pushed to take action quickly, um, we are focused first on survival, which can mean ignoring a whole bunch of very important things. So uh, with the need for speed, we make snap decisions 
we make judgments, uh, misperceptions, uh, et cetera. So one example of the need for speed is attribution bias. This is one of my favorites. I think this is so interesting. So we judge other people on their actions, but we judge ourselves on our intent. So let's just say this did not happen, but let's just say Rubina um, and I um, were having a meeting and let's just say she's late for the meeting. She was not late, um, but I'm just making this up. I would tend to judge her on her action. Oh, she just, she's, you know, she doesn't care about time. She's, she's not respectful. I'm completely making this up. Pardon me, Rubina. Um, but if I'm late for a meeting with Rubina, I tend to judge myself on my intent. Oh, I've had a really hard meet morning. Um, I had to tend to my sick mother. Like it's more about my circumstances. I judge myself on my intention. Uh, it's not about, um, it's not about who I am as a person. Um, oh, we've been saying those Southern Americans. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So again, attribution bias. We put ourselves in a good light, but other people, oh, that person, they're always late. They're such a bad driver or like whatever it is. Right? Okay. Attribution bias. Um, and then the last one here is sunk cost bias. Has anyone heard of this one? This is a super um, sneaky trap. Has anyone heard of the sunk cost bias? Um, Adam Grant talks about this one. If you haven't heard of Adam Grant, he's a organizational psychologist, really great. The sunk cost bias. Um, maybe you've had this happen to you. Have you ever been in, uh, you're working on a project and you have put so much time, so much energy, so many, um, you know, long nights into this project. And there's a little part of your brain that's saying, I don't think this is the right thing to be working on. I maybe should I, should I stop? But you've put so much effort in it that you just keep going, right? That sunk cost bias. So we continue a course of action because of all the time and effort that we've put into it. Even after we know it's not a good decision, right? But we can't give it up because we've invested so much time and effort in it. So those are the traps. Those are the traps. Um, let me know comments, questions, et cetera. We've got the information overload, feelings over facts, need for speed. Is there a particular trap that you can identify like, oh, you know, I've seen that one a lot, or I can see myself doing that one. I mean, certainly for me, need for speed, like, oh, God, I got to get this done. There's a lot going on. Um, we're being a sunk cost bias. Okay. Anyone else? Let me know there. <clears throat> I think it's a really helpful way to think about um, bias and try to avoid the, because once you're aware of these traps, you can more easily avoid them. So I'd say feelings over facts. Yeah, feelings are super powerful. I love Rene, uh, Brene Brown's quote about feelings. She says, um, we like to think that we are, how does it go? Um, you know, conscious people, you know, um, factual human beings that sometimes have feelings when the research shows we are completely um, uh, uh, guided by our feelings and we're sometimes logical. Um, okay. Uh, uh, oh, someone's telling me, oh, I, I spelt something. Oh, I sunk, sunk coast. <laughs> okay. Let me just change that right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, oh, and is he saying all of them? Yeah, great. I love that you recognize that. Um, Miguel saying feelings over facts is an interesting one as we try to check our hypothesis when we do data analysis for confirmation, wrong data driven decisions. Yeah. There's a great book called the mom test. Um, if you haven't heard of that, it's all about when you're trying to get input from other people, uh, without being biased. It's such a good book. Okay, um, I just want to be mindful of the time here. Um, can I give a get a thumbs up? Are you okay to move on to how to take action? <clears throat> just give me a thumbs up if you're okay. Great. Okay, so let's slide into this here. 
Okay, so um, I love this little character I found, right? Like it's kind of a superpower here. So these are some ways to take action steps with, with unconscious bias. And remember that all of us are biased. Your brain is not working if you don't have unconscious bias. <laughs> it's normal, it's natural. What we wanna do is try to recognize it and take action. Okay, so um, I invite you to count the dots um, on the screen there that's bes beside the gentleman. So please count the dots and pay attention to how you're counting the dots. So pay attention, so count the dots and then pay attention to how you're counting the dots. So I was originally going to play this video, but the, I don't know what happened with Zoom today. It won't let me optimize video. It's the first time that's ever happened. Um, I'll send you the clip in the workbook so you can see it. But this is a lovely, lovely math professor. And he talks about how some students, and think about how you did it. You know, did you go, did you count the uh, vertical lines, the horizontal lines? He had one student who counted this, the, the shape of a butterfly and then filled it in. So his point is in, in, in math, you can get to the same answer, you know, the same number of dots, but how everyone gets there um, is different. Oh, um, Irene saw the butterfly. That's lovely. And Vincent did it column by column. Did anybody else do it differently? You know, this is kind of the whole point of unearthing unconscious bias is that we get to see all these different perspectives, right? Um, Raymond did it row by row. Nicole did it differently. Great. So there's no wrong answer. And the beauty is in, is, is in those different perspectives, those different worldviews, those different ways of, of moving and seeing and being in the world. So um, again, right, it's impossible not to be biased. Remember, there was 11, there's 11 million things coming into your brain every minute, and we, you can only pay attention to 40. <clears throat> so um, some, and this research comes out of this beautiful book, um, The Leader's Guide to Unconscious Bias. Um, one of the things they, they strongly recommend is being mindful, right? Really focusing, being present, concentrating, thinking about how is bias influencing me? Um, one of the things I do is every year I have an annual project and, and I'll send more information about this in the workbook. Um, this year's project is DEI, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. And every month I, um, I take a topic of a marginalized group. So um, it could be LGBTQ. It, um, October uh, uh, 15th was World Mental Health Day. So for October, it was mental health. And every month in that topic, I try to read a book, watch a movie, listen to some music, listen to some podcasts, take a little course, just a little quick online course, and donate a little bit of money to the cause. So this has been, I'm coming to the end of the year, um, and it's been lovely, a way of just really opening myself up to communities that, that sometimes I have a lot in common with, and sometimes I don't have a lot in common with. <clears throat> so one way that you can do in terms of being mindful is really put this onto your radar, right? What do you want to learn more about, especially communities that you may not have a lot of experience with? Um, the other piece um, around um, being mindful um, is this unexpected lesson. So um, I unfortunately, well, maybe I'll try to play it. I'll see if it'll play. I don't know why. Uh, every Zoom call, I optimize the sound and video. So we'll see if, if this plays. Let me know in the chat if you can hear uh, the audio and, and see the video playing. Morning class. Please take your seats. Oh. Today's a special day. I've got something special for each one of you. It's a pop quiz. Correct, Mr. O'Brien. A pop quiz. You have 20 minutes to complete the questions on this test, starting from now. What is it this time, Mr. O'Brien? 
Um, professor, it seems like there's a question on this test that doesn't belong on this test, or any test for that matter. And which question is that? Question four, what is the first name of the woman who cleans the school? I see some of you think I made a mistake or maybe added question four as a joke. But listen closely to this. In your lives, in your careers, you're going to meet many people, and they're all significant. Each one deserves your care and your attention, even if all it is is a smile and hello. Because respecting each other, that's what comes first. Everything else comes afterward. Uh, I love that. I, I just think it's so simple, right? Um, showing people some kindness, showing some people respect, treating people with dignity, right? It's a big part of that mindful piece. So again, we're on the, uh, yeah, right? So it's simple and powerful. And I, it would be interesting, you know, clearly that, you know, um, you know, it wasn't a real, necessarily a real situation, but it'd be interesting to know how many of those students knew the first name of the person who, you know, cleaned their school for them, right? Okay, so uh, in these action steps, no, it's impossible not to be biased, give ourselves grace for that, and take action steps to overcome that bias. So being mindful, um, being focused, being present, concentrating. Maybe you turn this into an annual project. Um, I know I've gotten so much out of this. Uh, and then those unexpected lessons, right, um, for, for respect. Another one is creating psychological safety, right? There is the answer to every single pressing social problem. We, we have those answers. They're there. It's whether people feel comfortable and included and safe to contribute. So creating psychological safety for people is a massive thing. So how can you do that within your community, your family, your family of choice, your friends, your team, your organization? Uh, how can you create psychological safety, especially so people who are often uh, frequently affected by unconscious bias, so they can be participating, we can be participating. And sometimes that's a, that's a, a, a simple attention to dialogue. Uh, if you know the author Stephen King, he uh, um, writes horror novels, and his family, him and his partner, his wife donated a lot of money um, to an agency. And I don't know if you can read this, but basically it's a response um, by Stephen King. In the, in the news, it said that Stephen King and his wife donated 1.25 million to a particular thing. And she came back and she said, um, dear editors, um, married to a wife or a husband, in recent media coverage, of a gift that my husband, um, ironic usage, and I made to da, da 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 we became Stephen King and his wife. Wife is a relationship or status. It is not an identity. You could have made other choices. You could have referred to me as of Stephen or of his old lady or of his ball and chain. Um, so she goes on to talk about that. And I just thought that was really clever, right? She's she's recognized that trap and she's responding with humor. So think about our language. Is our language inclusive? Okay, another one is connection and belonging. That book talks a lot about that. How can we reach out, especially in these troubled times? I think so, for me, sometimes it feels like gravity is going to stop working. Like the world just seems so upside down so much conflict right now so how can we work for connection and belonging if people we are, we are hardwired to want to belong that's why cults and things like that work and gangs because they, they make people feel like they belong so how can we make people feel like they um, are connected and belong and then curiosity you know curiosity is born out of intelligence right it really really helps um to to uh, increase our intelligence. And I'll give you an example here, this lovely um, woman, she, um, this was part of my DEI initiative, I joined the, the Black Girls Unapologetic Book Club. And it's all it's often romance novels. And it's all about people who are not usually, you know, they don't usually take leading roles in novels, it's been great. 
and I shared this with um, permission. She has an equity alphabet. And if, uh, if you uh, click on that link, I'll also put this in the workbook. Um, you can get access. You, de- you need to put in your, your email address there, um, but you can get access to this equity al- alphabet, which I thought was just such a great thing, right? Increasing our knowledge, being curious. Okay, the next one is empathy, right? So curiosity is all about the head. Empathy is about the heart, right? How can we, um, how can we create empathy with people? And this this website here, I thought this was really interesting. Um, it talks about taking news stories and showing them from different um, perspectives, right? So that might be a tool you can look into. Okay, and then courage, right? Um, how can we have courage? This is not always easy, this journey. So especially if you are in a place um, where you can be an ally, so you, you aren't particularly affected by a particular, whether it's race or religion or whatever, but you see someone else, right? How can you have courage and, and um, have empathy? Um, I created this chart for you. Um, one starting point for that is to is to chart your people. So you can do this on your own time if you wish. I did an example there. Um, so basically you take the first line and put someone that you know, just put their first name, right? We don't want to, we don't want to have last names, but just put their first name. So one name per row and then chart your people. Um, it looks at um, ethnicity and race and religion and spirituality and physical ability and all those things. And each row has a pull down menu. So you can say, is that person the same as you or different? And then um, hidden, hidden um, thing there is if you scroll all the way to the bottom, um, you'll see that I've put in a formula to add up the sames and difference. So once people start entering, you can, you can, it'll automatically add that up. And particularly if you're getting same, 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 you may want to consciously have a strategy to reach out and expand your network to people that have different, you know, political views, different physical abilities, di- different sexual identity, um, orientation, etc. Yeah, Miguel, it's the it's there, I believe. So you just um, if you scroll, there's more columns to the right. So um, I, I'm pretty sure that it's there. I think it says um, sexual orientation or something like that. Okay, so as we slide into the finish here um, around this courage piece, I just wanted to play this last um, super quick video. Um, it's so sweet. Um, and just let give me a thumbs up in the chat that you can hear and see it. It's very short. Um, here. Where are you right now? So I love this clip. So the caregiver, the parent, the whatever is trying to get her to say Miami. They're in the city Miami in the US. And she keeps saying your Amy. So she is clearly having conscious uh, uh, courage. She's clearly having empathy, right? She's looking at it from her caregivers or her parent, whatever is, you know, whoever the person is. Um, and that person is not doing the same right, is is just doing the same thing over and over and over, stuck in their own mindset, right, their own bias. So think about that as you go forward. Um, okay, so as we slide into our conclusion, I really want to thank you for showing up. This is a difficult topic. Um, and I'm just so impressed how many people came. Um, let me know what was one of your key takeaways in the chart there? It's one of your key takeaways, we talked about what is unconscious bias, how to recognize it, the good news, the bad news, the traps, um, how to take action. What were some of your key takeaways? Being mindful and the traps, great. Any, anything else? What's stuck for you? The traps and how to take action, great. 
<clears throat> yeah, there's so much here. Um, I see different forms of unconscious bias, right? Yeah, there's 180 like in total. <laughs> I was shocked by that. Um, Vincent, unconscious bias is normal. Yes, it's our brains. Like we're we're taking mental shortcuts. Yeah. Olivia, how to recognize my own unconscious bias. Yes, great. Okay. Um, Yamboro is saying the traps and I think we're um, rethinking the different biases, particularly affinity bias. Yeah, it is easy to hang out with people that we know um, or sorry, that that are like us or that we like. Yeah, that's the easy part. The hard part is to go up to someone mm -hmm. you think is very different from you and strike up a conversation. Um, Jane, there's a positive side to unconscious bias. Yeah, it's these mental shortcuts. Uh, Nyambro, sorry, I meant halo, oh, halo bias. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, I want to make things as easy, oops, as easy as possible for you. So um, as those of you who've been here before know, I create a one-stop resource portal. So everything that you saw online, all of those resources you can get at, at that Digo link. So you'll click it and everything that I've tagged unconscious bias shows up there. Um, that will also go into the workbook. So feel free to look at that. And then um, I'd love to know, um, what will you do with your learning? So I love, 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 love that you showed up and you talked about your key takeaways. And really our challenge is getting this learning to leave the, the room. Right. So how will you take action? What will you do with this learning? Darren. Oh, Darren's going to share it with his team. Great. Miguel, note that all the links you're pasting come as an image. So not clickable. Oh, OK. So just uh, uh, perhaps co uh, copy the link um, and you can use it that way. And they'll all be in the workbook as well. Um, Olivia's saying I'm a manager, so this is extremely valuable for my hiring purposes. Great. Okay, and for personal life. Oh, I love that. Both, both professional and personal. Um, so I'd saying would use in training I deliver on competency-based interviews. Great. SE, be aware and intentionally access my thought processes and perceptions around people. Nice. So being very deliberate, being very mindful. Fabulous. Um, and Miguel. And, and Lee, can I just say something about the hiring since several people have talked about it? Yeah. Like one way to prevent the bias is to like actually have structured questions, structured rubric, right? So that, you know, there's a checkpoint. Remember data always gives us, um, uh, gives us uh, cues and uh, information. Lovely, thank you. Okay, um, the PowerPoint decks, both my own and Rubina's will be in your inbox um, right now. Poof, they got there one minute ago because um, folks always um, have, mentioned that they wanted those resources um, earlier. Everything else will come to you on Monday or Tuesday, the time stamped video recording, the audio recording and the workbook. Um, I want to let you know that Edward uh, Y, I don't think is on the call today, is the winner of, of um, I, uh, as I mentioned, I do the random drawing from the feedback that people give. So please, please, please um, take some time. I would love, love, love your, your feedback. I've put the link in the chat there. Really helps me get better. It also, you get a chance to tell me um, for next month's topic, which is tech tools, what you wanna see. So there's lots of opportunities for there. And people were telling me, Leanne, I really wanna give you feedback, but it's very long. So I made it much shorter. Um, so feel free to do that. Also, I would love, if you haven't already, I would love your feedback um, on membership programs because I'm designing a, a global uh, training of trainers academy right now. Um, please also uh, just put a couple more things in here. <clears throat> um, please also uh, share that membership link and help grow our community. If you found value, if this has been helpful for you, please share the membership link so people can join. Also, if you are a UN staff person, only if you are a UN staff person, and if you want uh, to count this towards your, uh, your UN professional development, you need to fill in that form. So I put the link in the chat there. And please mark your calendars, November 21st. It's our next roundtable. Uh, you will get a timestamp video so you can click to the point that you want. You'll get the workbook, all of that kind of stuff. 
Um, and finally, if you are interested in uh, talking to me about training around team building, tech tools, or training of trainers, um, please reach out. And this is my workshop catalog here. So you can see all sorts of other workshops that I do. Uh, thank you. A huge thank you to Rabina for taking the time. Um, she was so enthusiastic and just lovely, lovely, lovely to work with and clearly very talented. So thank you again, Rabina. And thanks to everyone for showing up. We appreciate you. And please stay well, stay safe, um, and keep learning, uh, learning and leading. I'm going to stop the recording here. <clears throat>